Talking Wolves are once again delighted to have partnered up with Manscaped and with the summer coming up and with Father's Day, our special offer is too good to miss. Now, as some of you may know, I've just come back from my first summer holiday. Lovely little trip away in Spain and I must say, the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 was an absolute godsend. This nifty bit of kit here has helped me shave pairs in places that I didn't even know had places, if you know what I mean. It's absolutely wonderful. It's not just the razor you get, you get a whole load of goodies in the Performance Package 4.0 and it's absolutely perfect for summer. Lads, don't sleep on it, go out and get one. Yes, Matt, and with Father's Day coming up as well, it is a perfect gift for you guys, especially for all of those dads out there. I know I've got a dad bod, but I'm not a dad uh, just yet anyway. Using the link in the description, you'll be able to grab the Performance Package 4.0, and it is a game changer. Inside the package, you will find the Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker, which is the ear and nose hair trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all of those goodies in. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TALKINGWOLVES at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using the code TALKINGWOLVES. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Wolves Transfer Rumour Podcast, the show that looks at all the rumours in finer detail. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Dave. Dave, how are you keeping, mate? Very well, thank you, mate. People can probably tell that we do this in the morning because we both look extremely tired. But uh, other than <laughs> I that, mate, yeah, I'm keeping well. <laughs> yeah, we, we record about eight o'clock in the morning uh, to try and get it out by uh, by midday. So, yeah, well, I, I find that when we record of an evening, though, I'm, I'm a bit more... I'm a bit more lacklustre because so I've been through the day. Whereas I get up in the morning, I've got a bit more, uh, got a I'll bit more energy. On, uh. There's only yeah. one eight o'clock normally in my day, anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave doesn't start work till ten, so <laughs> you get get to about nine fifty. <laughs> but mate, mate, the, the rumours the last the last few days or so there's been there's been quite a lot, haven't there? Quite a lot of juicy mm. ones. Yeah, it's it's picked up a little bit. I know when I think we spoke on Monday and said Do you want to do a video, and I was like. There's like literally nothing since we did the last podcast, yeah. but the last sort of 24 to 48 hours, it's really, uh, really hotted up a little bit. It has. So the first one that we're going to cover is, and I know we said last week, Dave, that we may have to dedicate a segment to diminutive centre forwards. Yeah. But I feel like we might have to, um, we might have to have a segment for destructive midfielders as well, because <laughs> for some reason we seem to be, we seem to be linked with a lot of defensive minded um, mid midfielders, do you, mm. what, what, what do you think that could be with ne Neves going? You, you'd think the likes of Lamina could 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 slot in there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's just the, obviously the rumours being rumours. Um, you would assume you know a club probably has a list of four or five players they want for a specific role, and obviously ended up picking up one. But um, I think one of the ones that we talk about today is probably a lot more likely than than the other. But I don't know. It, it might just be how Lopetegui wants to, to set up, having a couple of you know more defensive midfielders and then a, f a few more attacking players in there, like a four-two-four style, something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah, and and it and it could be as well that he wants to free up the likes of Gomez and Nunes, and, yeah, and have them in a in a in a, a different role. But the the one that we, we look that looks more likely than than when you just mentioned there, Dave, is the interest in Jeffrey Kondogbia. So reports emerged from Turkey suggest, to suggest that Wolves are interested in signing the Atletico midfielder. 30-year-old is said to have offers from Turkey too, and we'll assess his options once concrete offers are on the table. The Express and Stars, Liam Keane, friend of the pod, also <laughs> followed, his up and, followed it up and said Wolves are definitely interested but haven't tabled the bid. It's understood that... Wolves were actually interested in January, but didn't make a move. But Dave, with one, one year left on his current deal at Atletico, probably looks more likely it'll happen this window. Yeah, I think for the fee that's uh, that's been sort of rumoured as well, four to five million euros, I think it's fairly risk-free. You know, I'd assume his wages are still going to be a, a decent whack, but I think... Um, you know, he, he's a good he's a good player and, and would add a little bit more steel to that midfield. Whether we already need that, I don't know. But, you know, if Lamina, 
I think if Lamina did get injured or suspended, I think you, we lack a, a real defensive midfielder in there. I know we've got someone like Bubakar Traore as well, but I, you know, I think they'd see him more as a box-to-box midfielder rather than sort of a, a somebody that sort of sits in. Um, it's always weird with reports from Turkey as well. Like I always think rep- like Turkey, like articles that come from Turkey got really poor track records. Uh, but there was just something about this one. I thought, why? Why would you speak about Wolves first when there's other Turkish, you know, Turkish teams involved as well? And then obviously followed up by by Liam Keane. Um, I think this one's got legs, and I think this would be a smart signing by Wolves. And hopefully one that we can get through the door quite quickly. Um, we may well see it happen sort of in and around sort of the end of this month when Lopetegui wants wants the squad sorted. Yeah, we've we've been linked with him for quite a while though, haven't we? When mm. he when he's when been playing for, for other clubs. But I don't mind him, to be fair, Dave. I think he's a he's a, he's a steady headed. I don't think he's gonna, you know, pull any trees up. But in terms of having someone who can just sit in front of the mid defence, because I think that's probably his his best position. He's not he's not flamboyant. If he if he's going to make a pass, he'll give it to someone else to do it. But what he can do is is, is defend really well. So perhaps Dave, that could free up some other players. Yeah, and it adds it adds the physical aspects which we've spoken about at different yeah. times throughout the season and set pieces and so on. You know, he's a he's a he's a bit of a unit as well. Yeah, so it adds more. Two, of, isn't it? Yeah, adds more of a physical presence as well. And, We've seen it, you know, even at Everton, the, the final home game of the season. Um, you know, we dealt with them fairly well up until obviously right at the death, but they had a number of physical players that made the set pieces and the long throws quite difficult to deal with. That's something Wolves haven't taken advantage of enough and haven't got enough of. Um, so I think this will add something like that as well. But, you know, a player with lots of quality, Champions League, Europa League experience. So, yeah. you know, it'll be a good addition to the team. Definitely. I mean, when he moved from Monaco to Inter, I think the reported fee was €31 million Euros back in 2015. So that was oh, a lot yeah. of money then. So I obviously saw something on me. It hasn't quite worked for him. Saying that Atletico, he's played over 70 games in just over three years. But yeah, he's, he's, I think he's been more of a squad player, hasn't he, for them. But would be a welcome addition at Wolves and will probably play a similar role. But I'd probably expect him to start most weeks if, if never was to go. But the other rumour that for for a, for a similar position or a similar player, um, or a similar position, not really similar player, Dave, was that Wolves uh, for reportedly registered their interest in Borussia Mönchengladbach midfielder Manu Kona, and that's according to the Mail. Um, it said that he's valued around £35 million, so you'd imagine that's Wolves withdrawing their interest. Uh, <laughs> but he's also been linked with a move to Liverpool quite heavily. It said that Villa are interested too. It's not going to happen, this one. I'd be very, very, very surprised. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, it sounds like he's a very talented young player, um, especially, you know, with some of the teams that have been been linked with him, not just Liverpool, there's other teams around Europe as well. Uh, and obviously the fees are a difficult one for Wolves. Wolves can get that money. Um, obviously, there, there isn't any much money in the pot at the moment, um, but with a few player sales, £35 million probably would be available. But you would you would think Wolves would be daft to splash that all on one player when there are at the moment several other areas that that need strengthening and need priority. If we came out at the, the end of this window, and we would we wouldn't have signed a central midfielder. It's not the end of the world because we've still got it's like you know uh, say Neves goes, you still got Nunes, Jao Gomez, Bubakar Traore, and Lamina. Um, so at the moment, it's not a priority for Wolves. But yeah, you would think the fee. Suggest that this is this isn't a goer for Wolves anyway. Yeah, very good player. Um, can actually go past players as well. He's an, he's, an, he's another one who's an absolute unit. Um, still only a young lad as well, but he's quite intelligent in the final third too. Mostly as a as, as a box to box, which makes sense for him going to Liverpool with you know how how athletic and dynamic their midfield, how he, how Klopp wants their midfield to play. Um, so I'd imagine Dave, this is probably. Kone's agents maybe yeah. maybe um, trying to jump a bit of interest so that Liverpool are forced into making a bid. Yeah, and obviously there's Villa interested as well. Villa are probably more likely than us to to possibly go for him with the, them having European football. And, and I'm not sure what their sort of financial situation is like at the moment, but probably a little bit more um, money money in the bank. So, but yeah, I think this is more than likely just agent talk. 
Yeah. Well, it'd be a shame though. I think it'd be. I think it'd be great at Liverpool, but yeah, it'd be. I can't, I can't see him coming coming to Wolves. Another <laughs> player who can't see coming to Wolves, mate. He's Joe Felix. Oh mm-hmm. wow, well, silly season it has begun, hasn't it, mate? So there was a report that came out um, from journalist David Medina. To, and it reported that Felix understands that there may be no choice but to take a step back in terms of his next level of club. Doors should no longer be closed to destinations like Wolves, as the club could see us somewhere to unleash his talent. Thoughts, Dave? <laughs> uh, yeah, when I saw that one, I thought it was... I had to double-check the account and make sure it wasn't like a parody account or anything like that. But I think what um, the journalist is saying really there I don't think he's directly linking Jao Felix to Wolves. I think he's more touting Wolves as yeah. a possible destination or that's the sort of calibre of club. Like No disrespect to Wolves, like a mid-table club where he can you know, show off what he's capable of, almost be uh, a big fish in a small pond. Um, and basically, I know people, fans don't want to hear this, treat clubs like Wolves as a stepping stone to, to move on to bigger and better things again. The main issue, if this was even plausible, would be uh, obviously the fee. Uh, Atleti will have to loan him out again uh, with an option to buy because there's no chance anyone will pay the the, the amount of money that they're going to want for him. They paid over close to 100 million euros. Um, I, I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure what Chelsea's option was, but obviously they didn't take that up either. Um, listen, he'd be an unbelievable player for Wolves, but yeah, for for this summer, I would be very, very, very surprised. He's reported to earn around two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand pound a week as well, Dave. So, with those loan fees that you love mentioning, yeah, plus the wages, yeah, it's, it doesn't it, seem like a very plausible deal for Wolves, does it? If they are then to go and buy him, yeah, I mean for Wolves as well. If if you sign in a player on loan, they always want the opportunity at the end of the loan spell to sign the player. Um, and obviously with this one, uh, I can't see. It. I don't know if uh, if I could. I'll see if I could very quickly whilst we speak find the option to. To buy, uh, well, Chelsea didn't have an option to buy apparently at the end of the deal. Um, no, I don't. I don't. Th- I don't think they did. But they, they paid they a were... massive loan fee, of eleven million euros. Yeah. So plus his, uh, obviously his wages. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think this phenomenal player, and it's similar to obviously Antu Fati. I'm sure we'll talk about later on. If if you had to pick between Fati and Felix, you'd probably pick Jao Felix. But both very talented players, but. No disrespect, and, and both to... never want to come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I just can't see it happen. If Bruno Large was here, I could maybe, you know, think pos- it's a more of a possibility because of his relationship with Felix. But yeah, I, I think we move past this one. And who wouldn't want to play for Bruno Large, Dave? <laughs> exactly, mate. Yeah, <laughs> He's set to take on a job in Brazil. I think. Uh, as speak. Uh, there's two clubs fighting over him, believe it or not. A team in That's Spain it. and a team in Brazil. Yeah. Don't tell Jordan. Mm. Be fuming, yeah. It, it looks it looks unlikely, doesn't it, Dave? And yeah. and, and again, it's you've got to look at the, the the mentality of the player and and what motivates him. And the same with Fatty does does moving from Chelsea back to Atletico, then to Wolves. Will that motivate him? I suppose it yeah. depends on the, on the in the individual player. But from the from the outset, it doesn't look great, does it? We only finished one place behind Chelsea, anyway. That's, that's true, it's, mate. It's a sort of level, isn't it? True. <laughs> How many European Cups of Wolves won in the last yeah. 10 years? <laughs> no Asia <problem>. Trophy. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. A, a, another rumour that has cropped up, Dave, that did did surprise me a little bit, is that Brentford are reportedly lining up a move for Wolves defender Nathan Collins, and that's according to the Mail. Uh, Wolves want to try and make a profit on Collins that they sign for around £20.5 million in the summer. Um, and I, I would be open to let him go. If Brentford have identified him as as a potential target, then surely there's a player in there because Brentford's scouting is, is is usually very very good up there with the likes of Brighton in the Premier League. It's a weird one this one because it was a bit of a surprise when it came out. Um, I did a video recently, sort of grading wall signings, and to be fair, I put Collins sort of down towards the bottom just in terms of the price that we pay for him and what what we got as a return. And when I first saw the report, I thought if Wolves can make a profit on this, you ca- you could ca- if there's other players, better quality, similar sort of price available, you'd cash in and do it. But I was really surprised at the huge amount of support he got on, on social media when this report came out. The amount of people saying Wolves would be stupid to sell, which really, really surprised me. 
I saw obviously a couple of people talking about how good he was at the start of the season. I agree. I think he had some some good good games, uh, but I think the red card at Man City really put you know held him back massively. He struggled to break into Lopetegui's plans as well. So I think definitely that there is a player in there, no doubt about it. The one comparison I used on my most recent video was someone like David Garcia, who's available for around twenty million euros, and obviously Nathan Collins. But the the difference is. You would assume, I, th I think, Nathan Collins obviously homegrown. David Garcia is a lot older than Nathan Collins. So, it, it's a difficult one. I think Wolves would have to make a very healthy profit for them to sell him. And I'm talking maybe five to £10 million. And I can't see Brentford paying £30 million for Collins. I might be wrong, but, um, you know, but I think a lot of this fan base... It, it was a little bit more mixed on the YouTube comments, but a lot of people I saw on social media yesterday were really in support of Nathan Collins staying at Wolves. I don't know. It depends what the objective is, isn't it? And, you know, it, so only David Garcia or David Garcia, ready-made, could could slot in straight into defence alongside Dawson, you'd think. Um, yeah. But you're not going to make you're not going to make a profit on him, are you? Not at not at what twenty nine, unless unless he comes in and he's in his absolutely world class, and you might make a few more million on him. Um, Whereas with Collins, we know the ceiling could be quite high. He hasn't really done it in the old golden black yet, but he's still only twenty two. It's like, do you, you know, do you do you break even and, and almost like swap the players? But then you're not going to make a return. And I think Fosun will probably be looking at it, thinking we'd probably like to make a return on this. Yeah, it, it's it's really dependent on what Wolves want. Do they want just to short term, you know, short term really strengthen the team and try and push the team up you know, sooner rather than later? Or do they want to hold back for two or three years and could potentially make a hell of a lot more money? Um, you would assume they'll pick pick the latter. So, I, yeah, I think Collins would stick around. I think if other players come in, there's potential that he may get loaned out um, just to get more game time. But I think he will be a player that's in, in Wolves' plans next season. Yeah. Hopefully, mate. I like him. I, I, mm. I personally would rather... Um, w w would rather Kilman depart purely because of the the money beat the money touted around. He's a little bit older. What is he? Twenty six now. Max Kilman. He's yeah, not. He's yeah. not a puppy. I know he's still quite inexperienced in terms of his professional career. But I think if you could sell Kilman for for thirty million, then you would be able to replace him adequately with that with that mm -hmm. money, or or maybe even a, a, another player. But yeah, Kilman linked with Napoli and Spurs, and that was according to to Liam Keane, wasn't it? But that that seems to have uh, seems to have gone a, a little bit quiet now, doesn't it, Dave? So yeah, the Spurs Spurs link keeps popping up every now and then, but I think that was when the new manager got installed. That there was like an early report that he might go for him, and that sort of exploded. But yeah, at the moment that's pretty quiet. But I'm hoping, obviously, as of today, the transfer window is officially open. I'm hoping things start to heat up a little bit over the next couple of weeks with players returning from holidays and so on. Mm. Another one that <laughs> probably is going to go until the, the final day, knowing our look, Dave, is the, the Ruben Neves saga. So, Sport in Spain reported that Barcelona have almost ruled out the signing of Wolves' Ruben Neves this summer. That was a couple of days ago. Uh, Ansu Fati's rejected a potential swap deal to Molyneux, which is fair enough. Don't blame him. And Barcelona cannot meet the 30 million, 30 million euro asking price. However, George Mendes has urged Barca fans to keep calm about Neves' future. So, Dave, try and break that down, mate. It's uh, we, we, we could do with a decision sooner rather than later, couldn't we? So we know what we've got to spend. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, this would probably be one of the biggest sort of factors in, in terms of what Wolves can buy this summer. But it always seems to be every summer that this this is going on and on and on and on. Um Sport, like I said, are the only they're the big ones peddling the whole Ansu Fatty thing. Um, but it sounds like well, from day one he hasn't wanted to co wanted to come here. But it sounds like George Mendes just in the back of his mind thought, I'm gonna convince him, I'm gonna get convince him to come to Wolves and I'm gonna get this deal sorted. And obviously Barcelona have just said, Look, he, he doesn't want to leave. I think he scored three goals in his last two games when he returned from injury as well, which probably made life a little bit more difficult for Barca. Um and yeah, 13 million plus, obviously Barcelona can't spend, but then they're signing 18 year olds from Brazil for 40 million yesterday. So, um, yeah, I, I can't figure out. And the whole keep calm thing as well. I'm not sure if that was just to Barca fans or that was just in general, but so cryptic. No one, 
no one understands what that means. I put a tweet out yesterday in regards to whether you'd be bothered to see him move to another Premier League team if you know you're going to get closer to the £40 million mark. And again, that was very, very mixed. I use Newcastle and Manchester United as an example because they're the two of the names that were linked. But um, I think some people are still finding it very, very hard to understand why Wolves aren't valuing him more than 35 to £40 million. At the end, and comparing it to Mason Mount or Declan Rice, Declan Rice and Mason Mount are always going to get you more money because they're English. Uh, played more recently at European competition and Ruben Evers obviously only has one year left on his deal as well. So I, I think it, it's weird. Maybe he's not as good as we think he is because he's been our, our best player in and around the squad for the last three or four years. But for £35 million, pounds, I'm very, very surprised that more clubs aren't queuing up to try and get him with his with his Premier League experience. Yeah. It seems that Mendes is going to get Neves out of the club in some capacity, whether it's yeah, Barcelona, but yeah, one way or the other, he'll, 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 he'll get him out. I don't personally mind him going to Newcastle or or Manchester United. I don't think he'd go to Arsenal just because of his comments over the years. <laughs> I think he's probably burnt the bridges there. Um, but you're right about the English premium too. And, and Wolves are in a little bit of a precarious position. We haven't got a strong hand. He's got one year left on his deal with for a relegation battle last season we crap the year before like we we haven't got a strong hand so that's probably why he's only valued at 30 million isn't it Dave yeah i think that's what it is i, I think, I think yeah i think i think wolves will probably try and squeeze a little bit more but i think there were obviously reports as well if if he stays beyond this summer i think uh, he'd sign a new deal probably more to the fact that it will give wolves still a little bit of value and he just doesn't leave the club on a free in the future um but yeah, it's it's. I I think if he moves to another Premier League club, which I wouldn't mind, fans have got to realise he'll never be cherished and adored as much as Wolves fans have done. You know here, um, so that that's what we can. You know, Manchester United, he'll play Champions League football, but he's not going to be sort of idolised as much he has as he has here in Wolverhampton. Newcastle, he may be a little bit more, but again, I still don't think he's going to get the minutes there. But at the end of the day, Wolves. Need need the money, so wherever it comes from, I'm, I'm not too bothered. I can honestly see him coming back to Wolves anyway, in some capacity, whether that'll be after a couple of years at Barcelona and on a loan move, because they seem they seem to bring a load of players in, and then only so many get minutes. I mean, like Frank Frankie Kess would be the amazing signing for Wolves. Such a good player. I think who's, they were who's... trying to get rid of um, is it Ferran Torres as well? They only signed him like a year or two ago from Manchester yeah. City. So yeah, they're an absolute mess, Barcelona are. So. I get sort of the glitz and glamour of signing for them, but it's just going to end in tears. Yeah, I mean, Frank Kess, who, you know, we, we've spoken about him on here before, Wolves were linked with him a few seasons ago now. He's only played seven times in the league, well, seven starts in the league this season. Like, it's criminal, really. Isn't it? 21 appearances as a sub, it's criminal for a player of, of that calibre. But yeah, you can. It, it's, it's difficult to come into a club when you're almost lined up as a Busquets replacement because Busquets in Barca's eyes, in Xavi's eyes, he's, he's pretty much irreplaceable. So he's always going to yeah. be fighting a uphill battle. And I've, it's almost like similar, um, similar to large replacing Nuno. Like it, it, you've already, it's already an uphill task because you, you're yeah. replacing someone who was deemed as, as God in, in fans, in fans eyes. So it's always going to be difficult, but it's so important that we'll try and get a big deal and out going over the line. So it just gives us, a bit more, or, or unless they unless they know that a deal is going to happen and they're pretty certain, and, and but they don't want to almost show too much leg because if you sell yeah. Kilman for thirty million, Neves for forty, clubs are going to be thinking, oh, we've got seventy yeah, million to million. spend here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm. I think they'll have a, I think I think they'll have a rough estimate of what who's going to be going where and, and for what. So hopefully, as you said, Dave, it starts to heat up a little bit. Another rumor um, before we that we spoke about. On a, on the last podcast day was about James Ward Pro. So it seems that Southampton have uh, have upped their asking price to fifty million pounds now. I think um, since Liverpool have been interested, so you can't see that. Um, you can't see that happening, can you? No, and that just <laughs> adds fuel to the fire of fans that can't understand why <laughs> Neves is thirty five and the Championship player is fifty yeah. now. So <laughs> yeah, but. but Ward Prowse can hit the target from 25 yeah. yards with a dead ball. That's probably what the difference is. <laughs> um, conflicting reports coming out of Portugal, Dave, about the future of Pedro Neto. So 
Um, I think it was uh, Arbola had reported that Neto could be heading to Sporting on loan in a bid to rediscover some form after two injury hit seasons, but then record in Portugal very quickly rubbish those claims. Is this something you'd be against? Uh, it's a weird one. We... Left. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a weird one with Neto. I think if we were bursting at the seams, which we still have a decent amount of wingers on the books at the moment, uh, but it's definitely an area that we'll need to improve. Um, he needs game time. Uh, I think Portugal would be a good area for him to, to get that game time and improve. But um, yeah, record is the most reputable out of those two sources. And, you know, like, like you've said, they rubbish that one very, very quickly. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably prefer to keep him at Wolves. I think he needs a... Re- <laughs> I say good pre-season. He's had two good pre-seasons in the last two years. Uh, but he needs another good pre-season under Lopetegui or whoever is going to take charge and then go from there and hopefully just stay injury-free. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be against it. You talk about the wingers, though. You've got Chiquinho coming back. You've got Pedence. You've got Wang. You've got Neto. You've got Cunha you can play there. Adama, we don't in think terms of there. what, in terms of quality, I don't mean there's enough quality there. I no, volume, moves, area. Right? yeah, volume yeah. moves. Well, I think there's definitely a department you probably need to sort of. I wouldn't be against sort of selling to to improve that area. And I think they're all very different profiles. I think the only player who's probably more similar to Neto is Chiquinho in terms of being able to go past players because because. Mm. Pedence doesn't go past players. Cunha doesn't in wide positions. So it depends yeah. how it depends how how, um, how Lopetegui wants to set up. I would imagine he'll probably tweak things in the summer and we'll probably see different setup to what we've played this hope season. So. But yeah, yeah, I hope so because it was crap. But you know, <laughs> pra- pragmatism and all that. Uh, talking of Lopetegui, though, know, Dave, the saga continues. So it. it Wolves aren't going to come out and say, yeah, the manager who's under contract, who's still the manager, is going to be the manager next season, are they? No. But I feel like there needs to be some communications through a, a different medium just to give a nod to say, yeah, he's happy. They've had a chat and they're cracking on. Whether that's through Liam Keane, whether that's through Gillen Balagai, something needs to happen, doesn't it? Because apparently the president of Saudi club, Al-Hilal, is reportedly holding talks in Paris as he hopes to appoint a new head coach whom Julian Lopetegui is reported amongst the candidates to take charge of the job, and that's according to Tuta Mercato in Italy. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this just keeps dragging on a little bit, doesn't it? This this saga it almost needs to be put to an end, it, even if it means him going, because yeah. it's not good. Tuta Mercato, it's not a great source, but there the were... I think Allegri was linked, and that's probably why um, they were reporting on it. But then there was a, a couple of, uh, I think it was a French Al Hilal page saying that Lopetegui was the leading candidate yesterday. But I couldn't, I, I think we both struggled to find the source for that tweet. It's hard. I, I don't think the club are ever going to come out and just quash rumours because that's not, that's not what happens. Yeah. But even local journalists, I think, are still none the wiser about this as well. Because I think you're right. I think if people are asking them, they'd be saying Lopetegui staying. Maybe mm-hmm. it's something that in a couple of weeks' time when people such as Matt Hobbs or whatever return uh, from from holidays, it may be an article sort of outlining Wolves' plans for, for the summer and onwards and Lopetegui's included in those. I don't know. But this is, again, you've probably got seven to 14 days to figure out what's going on here and Lopetegui decide what he's doing because... July the 1st always seems to be that sort of marker. But for Wolves, they'll have a summer tour or summer sort of camp early in July. Um, they've got South Korea at the end of July. So by sort of the next, like I said, next sort of 10 days or so, they need to know what's going on. Um, there's rumours about Frank Garagaza as well, who's his technical advisor leaving. Um, Espanol apparently want him. Uh, but I think he was always going to come as a short-term short term uh, appointment anyway. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think fans are just fed up with the uncertainty. It's not a, it's not that fans are doubting his quality as a manager. I think they're just doubting his almost loyalty and um, demeanour. Is that the right word? What his attitude toward, towards <laughs> the job, really? Uh, it's weird one about Gary Garza as well. Because do, do you remember uh, David Connolly used to play for like Leicester yeah, yeah. and... 
He he posted something from almost like a seminar that Garagars had done a few months ago, um, talking about like how hands on he was with identifying talent, rather obviously rather than signing them, but identifying talent at Wolves. So it seems to be strange that he could be going, Lapategi could be going. Um, the so... thing there, there was something that that was. I remember I read an article and I saw it pop up again yesterday. Um, that that was a Lopetegui appointment rather than a Wolves appointment. So he was yeah. almost appointed to sort of help Daniel Lopetegui, obviously mm-hmm. Yulan's son. Um, so I think maybe it was always going to be only a six month, six to twelve month thing anyway. But I I, I don't know. Um, but like you say, yeah, he has done sort of speeches and seminars about how he's going to approach things with Wolves. So I don't I don't know. It's uh. Everything's up in the air at the moment, but I wouldn't expect an official club statement at any point. You you, you need to rely on your local journos for this one, I think. Yeah, and, and I think the fact that they're still up in the air, you, you bet your you know your bottom dollar that the likes of Steve Madley, etc., will be contacting the club and saying, "Look, there seems to be a lot of noise around Lopetegui's future. Can we just get a couple of words?" And the club have probably said, "We don't know." Yeah. So it probably is up in the air because if it, if everything was fine and. The, the club's name was being used as a as a bargaining tool, and they would come out and say, "Yeah, everything everything's fine." Like, no, no news here. But the fact mm. that things are still up in the air does suggest that there is still a bit of a bit of friction there. Yeah, it's just uncertain, and that's what's frustrating for Wolves fans. You can't obviously we're linked with players. Uh, you can't structure a team or you know or, or build a team with, when you don't know who's going to be in charge of the club so it's difficult as well um, and I'll be very disappointed if he does go at this point and I know it's still plenty of time left before the start of the season but you know you've lost a good two to three weeks of preparation really so um, yeah we'll wait and see on this one I think Do you think that Wolves will be in the background, eyeing up potential manager, but can I think you'd be that? Da- I think they'd be daft not to even have op- options. You remember, like again, we mentioned Brighton, yeah, well, Brighton contingency had, plan, yeah, yeah. They knew if Graham Potter was going to be appointed or, or or you know taken off, then they had like three or four managers they were happy to to take. So as long as it's not Pedro Martins and flipping Carlos Carvajal, then yeah, <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah. Who knows, mate? Who knows? It could be even Michael Beale. <laughs> I don't know. Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back. That's all That's all the rumours from the last few days, Dave. I've enjoyed that. We should hopefully be back with another one. Um, well, depending on how many rumours there are, really. Maybe start off next week. Um, yeah. But yeah, just make sure you keep an eye on Talking Wall Socials for all the up-to-date rumours, Dave. Where can people follow you, should they wish to? It's just at Dave as a party. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, yeah, me and Matt will be hosting... It is sold out, unfortunately, but local legends event tomorrow with Steve Ball, which we're looking forward to. So if you did catch the grab tickets to that, look look forward to seeing you. Yeah, you say unfortunately there, Dave. <laughs> unfortunately sold out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll be at we'll be at that. Um yeah. well it'll be tomorrow night. This will be going out on Wednesday, won't it, Dave? So yeah, yeah. Be there tomorrow night. Is it the, the Swan at Techno? Swan lower green techno, yeah. So should be a good never, one. Never been. Is it any good? Yeah. Neither have I, so I can't comment. Haven't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll see. We'll so. see. But yeah, looking forward to that. I'm M Cooper Wrights on Twitter and Matt Cooper Bites, and we are, of course, talking wolves. Let us know if you like the video. Uh, comment down below who you think Wolves should sign or your opinion on these rumours. If you are new here and you have enjoyed it, please feel free to drop us a subscribe or a review, five-star review, of course, on Spotify and Apple. And until next time, take care and enjoy the weather. <laughs>